Hey there, I'm Nina Freelon, and I'm a jazz singer and a podcaster. And you are listening to FaceTime with Todd Wharton. So I hope everybody had a great 4th of July weekend. I know I did. Now, I know it's been three years since we've actually had a real holiday with fireworks and food and the whole nine, and we all enjoyed it. Now, I know some people also have completely went overboard and even OD. So you know what? I'm going to call this clip 4th of the Why? white people. We'll be right back with Nana Freelon. Welcome back to the show, everyone. So my guest tonight is a six-time Grammy Award jazz nominee. She's a composer. She's a painter. She's a podcaster, which also got an award nominee as well. But don't take it from me. Let's take a look at a clip. Ladies and gentlemen, the 64th annual Grammy Premier Ceremony. Please welcome to the show, Nana Freelon. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Todd. I'm doing good. Yeah, I see you relaxed. You got a mellow, mellow vibe about you. I guess that's where your jazz comes from, stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, trying to keep those shoulders down from the ears, you know? Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm loving that modern background you got going on. That's the house that I want. Love yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. We like that modern, uh, that modern feel. You know, it's... It's interesting. We're living in a lot of anxiety, aren't we? I don't know about you. That's an understatement. Uh, I mean, the past what? It's not even just the past couple of years. And, you know, people always bring up the COVID thing. I, I think, honestly, COVID is kind of like the ceiling of the BS that we've been going through for a long, long time. There are obviously situations that I don't know what people went through uh, based on our backgrounds. But it's unnecessary, again, BS that shouldn't even never happen, you know. And uh, fortunately, there's music where music allows you to express yourself in the most emotional way possible. True. And talk about it. And jazz happens to be one of the coolest, mellowest music I've ever heard. And you don't, sometimes you don't even need words to feel what's going on in that trumpet or a saxophone or even just the melody of a hum of a vocal artist like yourself. It's true, it's true. Music has that capacity, you know, to um, speak to the mystery, you know, yeah. speak to the things. Words are good for some stuff, but mm -hmm. it, you know, sometimes you gotta drop the words and just go for the heart. So uh, I'm really, feel really blessed that I have this other language. Yeah. That no matter where I go in the world, Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if I speak the language or not. You know, I have this other vocabulary that's human. Yeah. You know, it's human. It's something that touches the heart and it doesn't mm -hmm. lie. Yeah. You know, it's not, you, there's no artifice there. It's, mm -hmm. um, it is what it is. People feel you or they don't feel you. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I, feel, I feel really blessed to have that other, you know, that other way of connecting with people. Yeah, I love that. And 
Your career went a little different route than a lot of people's career. A lot of people try to sustain a family and a career at the same time. Um, you started out with your loving husband, or rest in peace, by the way. Um, we developed three amazing kids. And then later in life, you decided to develop your jazz career. Was your main focus family first and then get into music? Was that something planned out? Well, actually, what, what worked for, for me was a blending. It was mm -hmm. a blending. You know, I, I, I always knew I wanted to sing. Yeah. I always had that fire in my belly. And I also had a family. Yeah. And I, I had this narrative in my head that said, you know, you can't do this and this. Mm -hmm. It ended up not being true for me that I right. couldn't do both. Right. And I tell my students now, you, you can do everything you want to do. You just can't do it all at the same time. Sure. <laughs> so um, figuring out a way to light the fire for the artist self and also light the fire for my family self was something I had to figure out. And for everybody, it's going to be a little bit different. I was mm -hmm. lucky to have a supportive husband, uh, you know, a mate who was an architect and an artist in his own right. Mm -hmm. So he encouraged the artist within me. Yeah. You know, he didn't say, well, you know, sort of take care of the home and then deal with you later. He was like, if you want to do this, we'll figure it out. And mm -hmm. we did. Started on a very local level singing on Thursday nights at the Sheraton. I mean, it was that plain and simple. But mm -hmm. at that time, I didn't know that much music. Yeah. So it was totally appropriate that I was working on a very um, kind of local level. As my experience grew, so did my opportunities. And I believe that's the way it works out. Right. And I believe in that as well. And when you say, you know, you definitely had a background in music. It's funny how our parents, when we grow up, what they play kind of influences our future. And I believe your two influencers, if I'm not mistaken, was Nina Simone and Bill Erkskin, um, who you cited. Um, with me, I think my father, even though he was Jewish, I had an Italian mom, I was influenced by the Frank Sinatra's and yeah, yeah. Cuomo's and... When we get older, when we're kids, we don't realize what we're listening to. We're like, can you cut that crap off, please? And put on what <laughs> I listen to. Play my stuff. You know, come on. But then when you get into your late 20s, you start to appreciate artists like this. Like, wow, I was raised with Nina Simone. Um, God bless you for that, by the way. Now, how much of a huge influence was Nina on you? Because her lifestyle was crazy as well growing up. She had, she had a lot of challenges, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we talk about who influenced us. At the time I grew up in Boston, yeah. um, everything in the world was on the radio. Mm -hmm. You could have James Taylor and James Brown on the same yeah. station. Yep. WRKO was, going, I mean, we just, WILD, I mean, <laughs> music was, it wasn't so segmented like it is now. It seems like they yeah, have like five artists and that's it. Mm -hmm. So I was exposed to a lot of different kinds of music. And like you, what I yeah. gravitated toward was very different from what my parents liked. Yeah. But the, I think the point is the exposure was there, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, Nina Simone emerged on the scene in the 70s yep. as a black woman, mm -hmm. as a proud woman. Yeah. Those are the influences, not so much her vocal style, but more her being unapologetically who she was. Yeah, and I love she, it. Took a, she took a hit for that. Yeah. She took a mental health hit. She took a, 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 a hit in terms of she was blacklisted for a while. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, and I don't think we can underestimate how uh, important it is to be who you are. Yeah. You've got that thing in the back that says, be you. That's a whole lot harder to do than it is to live. By the way, thank well, you for saying that. Huh? No, I have to say, sorry to interrupt, but thank you for noticing that. You're actually my first guest this season that noticed that. On, uh, on that side, because that's a big statement with me. So thank you. And thank you for what you just said. And continue, my apologies. Yeah, no, no, it's just, you know, 
The world is saying something different. The world is not saying be you. Mm -hmm. The world is saying be whoever is on the lens of the public and the pop culture at the moment. Be them. Mm -hmm. Be someone else. You know, be accepted. Be right. liked. Have enough right. likes. That is right. not real. That's not real. No. And you're hitting so many great points that I actually never discussed with anybody. Um, where you said likes, I think social media created the like to make people feel better. But I think more people rely on the hearts on social media than the hearts of real people offline. Um, it's a great topic you just hit on. Um, and thank you for saying that again. And being you, I, I 100%, I think people at the end of the day, like Nina Simone, no matter how many trials and tribulations she went through, she's never going to regret her life because she lived the life the way she saw it for herself. It wasn't right. about oppressing other people. It's about impressing yourself. It's about waking up, looking in the mirror and be like, you know what? I recognize you. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people of all cultures kind of don't do right now because everybody wants to be the next social media wave. Everybody wants to be this. Everybody wants to be that. I mean, I never thought in a million years I would wake up and somebody's dad dies, but then five minutes later, they died to do an ass pick in the bathroom just to put it on social media. It doesn't make sense. I don't get it. Um, but I guess that's an era we got to live in. So hopefully me and you aren't around for the next president in about 90 years. <laughs> I don't want to know who that's going to be. Um, yeah, right. But uh, I checked out the... Um, the clip of the Grammys, and I watched the Grammys, obviously. Congratulations on being part of the uh, band of the Grammys, the opening Thank band. You. And uh, you actually played with somebody I interviewed in season two, uh, Leland Sklar, who's an wow. amazing, amazing bassist. And then I love the opening. Like, you got to, how, how great was it, even though you're an icon as well, but to perform with, Literally, not just the singers, the band itself. Like, there was a collaboration there of, like, a Star Wars of amazing characters all in one row. How was that it feel? Is, to it up? was awesome. It was awesome. You know, each one of us who are in the front are in different uh, bands. And we're in, mm -hmm. you know, some of us front uh, bands of our own. Some of us are in, you know, different situations. But mm -hmm. that's the thing I mean about music, right? Yeah. You come in and your goal your agreement is mm -hmm. we're all going to come together no matter what our history is, no matter yeah. what we were doing last week when we were headlining and yeah. we're going to come together to make something special for this moment. Mm -hmm. That is so, that is so awesome. And it's so humbling yeah. because um, every one of us has a resume that's yay long, but we all came together. The musicians who were playing, the music director, you know, all of all of these human beings came together yeah. and said, we're going to make this music. We're going to make this moment shine. Yeah. And I love that. And I love the fact how it wasn't just about all the cultures they brought together. They brought together an array of different genres of music into one. I it mean, did. you had folk, you had rock, you had jazz. Got that cool harmonica blues thing, Dad. Yeah. You think on? Yeah. It was so cool. I think I watched that video like fifteen times. I put it up on my story just to let people know. I got this great lady coming out. What you guys see this interview? Yeah. Um, and six time Grammy nominated. I mean, congratulations on six. People just wish. I mean, everybody wants to win, but just to get one nomination, people just wish for because that excels their career. And not only that, I mean. You got to be nominated with your son in the same no. year, which is so I great. Mean, it was so great, so great, so great. You can't make I mean, this. Up. You can't make it up. I mean, I couldn't even. I couldn't even like you know write it on my wish list. I'd like to be nominated with my son in the same year. Uh, <laughs> no, not so much. It's 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 one of those gifts that life mm -hmm. gives you. Mm -hmm. You just have to be grateful. She yeah. said, say, damn, that's so cool. Yeah, I love that. And I got to ask, did you guys even throw like a party? And, and who was the headliner for that? Was it you and your son? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I always have to let them know. I brought you to the party, <laughs> man. <laughs> I brought you to the party. That's right. Um, but no, we just, 
we just grooved and we're still grooving on it, man. We're still grooving on that moment mm -hmm. where um, the stars aligned and, you know, we got a chance to both stand in the spotlight. And that, um, you just, I don't know how to say it except to just say you can't make it up. It's just one of those. And we made history. There yeah, has did. never been a mother-son nominated in the same year in different genres. So that part of it uh, can never be taken away from us, win or no win. Uh, yeah. It's a moment. Yeah, and I think your husband was on that stage just like, I that's my family. So. Oh, I think so. That's think my so. family. Yeah, that's that was a blessing. And uh, congrats was. on that. And I'm about to get a little teary. And shut up, everybody. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I won't do it. I won't do it. <laughs> So to get into some subjects right now, um, congrats on your 11th album. Um, that's that's crazy, 11 albums. And music that you got to memorize 11 albums worth. That's <laughs> that's pretty insane. Like, I always joke around with my brother. Like, I kind of don't remember what I had for breakfast this morning, let alone memorizing 11 albums. Um, Time Traveler, um, some of the greatest albums ever. And I cite Mary J. Blige, who's created from pain. Um, Mary, I think, became an iconic singer based on she let it all out there. And that's why she is who she is today. And you can feel it in her voice when she sings. You kind of took a different toll. You did this to really cope with something that you couldn't get back physically, right? Um, how hard was this? Because I watched the trailer of the album and this must have taken a toll on you mentally. How... How was the process dealing with this new album? And we all know what it inspired behind, but tell me about the road that you took to get there. Oh, wow. Uh, first of all, thank you for asking. Yeah. A lot of times when there's a tough subject, people dance all around it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like they go to the mountain to avoid, right. you know, the question is right there. So appreciate mm -hmm. that. Time Traveler actually ended up being a container for my grief. Nice. It okay. was the place I could put all those feelings, sometimes complicated feelings, sometimes conflicting feelings, you know, yeah. like, yes, he's gone. Mm -hmm. I wish he wasn't. Mm -hmm. God, this is crappy. Oh, you know, do I still have a voice? Can I still sing? Who am I now? What is a widow? How do you mm -hmm. spell it? I mean, you know, I yeah. never asked yeah. for this. That kind of thing. Yeah. I put it all into the music. And I'll tell you something interesting. I, I feel like I'm kind of more vulnerable, more authentic on this project than any other one because I had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. I had to say, either I can pretend I'm okay. Right. And be like the strong woman. Right. Just like I was before, I'm bouncing back or I can be who I am now, the bumps, the bruises, the, the difficulties, and trust that my audience will accept me like I am. Oh, yeah. I think they'll accept you even more. I, one thing I, I noticed didn't know that, the, though. I didn't. I, honestly, I didn't have a choice. I, I tried. If you have to pretend you're okay and then sing through that, that's extra energy you could be putting into the music. Mm -hmm. But instead, you're pretending. And I'll tell you something else. For all of those people out there who are pretending they're okay, I have one thing to say. You can't get no help if That's you're right. busy pretending you're fine. That's right. I like that. That's 100% right. And going back to what you just said, I hope people can listen. One thing I've noticed about all stars and celebrities, you gain more fan access when people can relate to what they can relate to. Um. I'm telling you, your new album is probably going to be the best out of all 11. And watch. Um, I got to ask, though, are you going to possibly perform here in New York City? Uh, I, I'm hoping that that will come. You know, stuff is coming back online slowly, slowly. So, um, you know, I'm coming up to New York in June for the Gracie Awards. That's not a performance. That yeah, is, no. it, that's a... That's another stellar moment in my life where, where, you know, the Gracie Awards is awarding my podcast. And this is my first year, one season. Yay! Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, congrats on that. 
Thank That's you. Awesome. So I'm super excited and um, hopefully, hopefully a, a, a play in New York will, will, will come out of this um, Gracie Award. You know, people are working. Some yes. people are working. I haven't really come back to where I was pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, I was traveling overseas. I was playing in Europe. I mean, I was doing a lot of things that I don't see on the horizon right now. It is right. coming. But right. people are talking 2023. They're talking early 24. So it's still pushed out quite a ways. And, yeah. um, and then honestly, some places that I played in the past before COVID didn't make it through. So they no longer exist. Some of these little right. clubs and these little performing venues, they couldn't hold on. Yeah. Well, there's even fewer places to play than there were before. It's, it's really, um, I mean, we're just in the waiting room trying to see how this, how this is going to shake out. Yeah, I think what's happening right now, especially in New York, a lot more outdoor venues are more giving more opportunities because it's not a it's not contained, right? Yeah. And uh, well, we, you know, I think people. I think it's funny how when time goes on, people forget. You know, things still do exist. It's not. It doesn't just leave because it decides. You know what? I've been here for about two years. Like they were good. Let's let's bounce. No, it's always there. But I think indoor venues is going to take more into the 2023 24 but i think outdoor venues is going to be a lot more accessible and i'll tell you something right now jazz is dope in an indoor venue back in the day when i used to smoke which i shouldn't have in the first place drinking about glass of wine <laughs> you know you're chilling you know you got that uh o to o to nina that type of poetry, <laughs> you know what i'm saying that back in the day and now um I love hearing jazz outside more. I can actually see you perform with somebody like Keon Harold, who's oh. that's my dude. Okay, for a couple of years, okay. and uh, Keon, because of the tragic happening that he just went through a year and a half ago, his career took off as well. And jazz is starting to get recognized more and more again. As yeah, jazz is awesome. It shouldn't be just in the clubs or in the lounge, jazz be played in big ass venues, That's true. you know, because there's a vibe in the, in the, in the crowd. When you got jazz going on where everybody's just like, you, you don't get that type of feeling unless you go to a Bob Marley concert back in the day. <laughs> <everybody's> <laughs> One world. <laughs> you know, exactly. Exactly. Um, and that's so cool, again, with your podcast um, called Great Grief. Again, that was another coping mechanism, which you're now getting into season two. And your dog is like, yeah, that's right. We need season two right some, now. There was just some thunder <laughs> happening, and the dogs are like, what's going down? Something's getting ready to go down. You guys be quiet. Exactly. I love dogs. Dogs know what's up. They know what's going on. They're like, Who, who's that guy you're interviewing <laughs> with right now? He, he sounds like he's a good person. He knows his stuff. <laughs> I like that. But no, this is uh, really amazing. And I also want to touch base before we leave. Um, and another congratulations by doing a tour in tribute to Ray Charles, which is really, really cool. George on the mind. Um, I know you're a playwright composer. And I saw some clips uh, through your video where you're an artist as well, not just like your husband. If you guys don't know, her husband is a chief cheap architect for the Smithsonian Museum of the African American, right? Uh, performing That's right, arts. in D.C. Yeah, in D.C. So um, that tour right now is doing great. Is that something that you're talking about possibly doing a play on as well, George? No, no that, that, is a, that is its own, you know, sort of project. And it's been wonderful to work with Take Six and Clint Holmes and Tom Scott. It's been amazing. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, we've had the opportunity to play in a lot of places in the States. I hope we can bring the show to New York. That would be super awesome. Um, but, you know, it's everything I'm feeling is in its own time and place. You know what I mean? Everything, yeah. everything will eventually find its own level. And um, will it be like it was before? No, I don't no. think so. But in some ways, maybe, maybe better. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, maybe just different. And that is okay. Because if the truth be told, things weren't all that spiffy for everybody before. That's right. 
So let's not act like everything was cool and then COVID messed everything up. Mm -hmm. um, COVID has also given me a, a, a rare gift of quiet. Quiet, not running around, not running through airports, not packing bags, just chilling mm -hmm. so that I can process my grief, so that I can be with my grandkids, so that I can learn how to cook manicotti, you know, I, all these things that I never would, never in a million years would I have taken the time to look at a cookbook and do something from scratch because I didn't have the time. Yeah. And I took the time to look in here at me, mm -hmm. you know, um, and it's been, in that sense, it's been really good. I wouldn't have a podcast, Great Grief, if it hadn't been for COVID. Yeah. I wouldn't have a new record out. I wouldn't have these accolades because I would have been too busy chasing the next thing. Yeah. So in some ways it was, and I talk to artists all the time. Every single artist I know says, yeah, I also took some time to explore painting or walking in nature or, you know, developing my relationships. And some people, they're like, look, I realized I was with the wrong person all this yeah. time. And so we split up and it's cool, but we split up, but I never would have even realized it if I hadn't been in this house with this human being that I don't even know. Yeah, I can kind of relate to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm glad you're saying all that because I think, I, I, this is not exactly, I think about 85% of the world did not take advantage of, even though COVID is horrible, but what COVID also bought. Right. To find yourself, to find your family, to find you and everything else. And I think there's going to be a lot of artists out there like yourself that's going to have a second go around in their career because you found new avenues to roll with. Right. That's that right. you could put into the career you already built to make it better, to learn new things, learn yourself, to learn how to cook, to learn social media. And I think there are a lot of people out there that missed the boat because they were so busy planning on watching Netflix every day. Instead of saying, hey, let me watch Netflix for three hours, or let me take the rest of the time to develop me. So when we get out of this thing, I have a plan on how to kick the world's ass when I'm able to That's put right. my pants over my underwear and actually walk outside and enjoy That's life. That's right. Take the pajamas off, people. Mm -hmm. Take the pajamas off. And I tell my students, you like Netflix, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. we like Netflix, Miss Freeland. We love Netflix. I said, what, do you want to be on Netflix? You got to turn Netflix off yeah. and work on something creative so that somebody can put you on Netflix. Right. You know, you, you have nothing to say if you're always consuming products that somebody else took some time away from the TV to build something, to create right. something, to write a story, to write a screenplay, to, to do something. So there's got to be a balance. There's nothing wrong yeah. with some entertainment and chilling. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But if that's what you're doing 24 seven, I don't know, something wrong. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. Um, thank you, first of all, Nana, for being uh, a guest. Thank you, Todd Warden. Thank you for your dogs for co-starring. I appreciate that. <laughs> Nothing but a cool breeze before I started talking to you. Now everybody wants to be in show business. They all want to come on FaceTime with Todd Warden. I get it. I understand. <laughs> you need to Sorry. do a dog show. Everybody bring their dogs on. That would be great, actually. <laughs> and I can do some of the voiceovers and just have fun with that. <laughs> that would be awesome. But yeah, thank you again to you, your dogs, your family, your inspiration, everything you've done for not just the jazz community, but the community of music and art. So I think you and your husband were and still are an iconic couple, always will be, and we oh, appreciate everything you. you brought to the table. Thank you so much, and I appreciate you having me on. So, Nana, thank you for being a guest on FaceTime with Todd Warden, and congratulations on your 11th album. I know how hard it was for you to put that together, but you did the right thing, coping with grief through music, and we all should learn from you, because that's a great thing to do, and I promise you, people will relate. To this album because I think they're going to love your words, they're going to love your heart in it, and congratulations on you and your son for getting a Grammy together as well. And again, congratulations on your podcast, your Gracie Award, and everything that you got going on right now. And kudos to you for taking the bad things from COVID and turning into a bigger career than I think you're going to have coming out 2022, 23, and so on and so on. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this interview with Nana. I know I did. 
But until next time, if you're not living a passionate life, then whose life you live? Take care, guys. I'll see you soon. He is the most interesting man in the world. I'm not always on YouTube, but when I am, I make sure I'm subscribed to FaceTime with Todd Warner. Be thirsty, my friends.